This one's called Japanese people are miserable from Mr. Anime Man. Let's see what he has to say about it. Anyone who's visited Japan will find out pretty instantly just how amazing this country seems like on the surface. Everybody. You ever have friends where they're like, you know, I hate capitalism. I hate consumerism. I hate New York City and all the different advertisement and stores. But as soon as they go to Japan, they're like, ooh, capitalism and advertisement. But Tokyo, but Japan, oh, it's so cool. You know what I mean? I think a lot of people has a very superficial and surface level understanding of how Japan seems to be a utopia compared to their own country without actually understanding, you know, what goes on truly behind the scenes. But he is kind, respectful, the yeah. streets are clean, the food tastes good, the culture is diverse and mm. grand. But when you look deeper underneath that surface, it, it might not- it, it, is, is the culture diverse and grand? I don't know what he means by diverse when you're talking about culture. When I, when I think like culture diverse, I'm thinking like, multicultural societies like Canada, you know, it's like a fucking boiling pot of different races. Japan is pretty, you know, they're pretty just like one, one thing, right? Don't seem all that utopian. And if you've been on my channel before, then this is definitely something that you'd be aware of as it's a big thing that I cover here on this channel. But I found this. I am not a regular viewer. I mostly farm Giga content, but I saw this thumbnail and this title, and I'm like, yo, this is the guy from like Giga videos and he collapsed and stuff, right? So I'm like, I want to check it out, but it seems like he has pretty interesting to say. Recent article that has actually quantified just how much of a farce this surface happiness of the Japanese people really might be. Give We've it got to this me. article here that. Guys. Let me read this out for you. Hold up, I can't fucking read Japanese. Just reading the title here says that according my to subtitles? a study, the happiness index of Japanese people in Japan is actually in the bottom three in the world with- Thank God we got Mr. Anime Man with the fucking subtitles, but the happiness index, bottom three in the world. That kind of makes me wonder, I wonder where South Korea is at because I'm South Korean, but a lot of these like Asian countries, it is so hyper competitive and so fixated on results over everything else. One of the first things that I encountered when immigrating to Canada from South Korea was how lax the environment was. The kids weren't in a pressure to compete as hard as they can to make it out on top so that they could live a good life. The kids were just hanging out, having sleepovers. They didn't give a fuck about school. All their parents seemed so nice, so welcoming. I'm not saying my parents weren't nice, but it was just the culture shock was so different when I moved from Asia to Canada children ranking in the worst two of the world, saying that Japanese people are not as happy as a lot of other countries out there. Which is surprising, right? Like is it surprising? I know that the work culture in Japan is fucked. They are still in the dinosaur ages, and there is something about an Asian culture that makes them so submissive and just accept, you know, um, uh, this kind of corporate uh, culture. In Korea, for example, you need to basically like respect your elders in a way that's totally different in North America, right? You see white kids calling their fucking parents, hey, Bob, hey, you know, Barb, you know, mom and dad. They don't really say sometimes it's first name. We literally have to say in a different honorific that, you know, make sure that we are respecting the elders. And when you have this kind of structure, there is less individualism and more hive mind group think where you're a cog in the wheel and you need to basically don't make trouble for others, make sure you stay in line, you're expected to be this kind of person in society, fit the role that you were born into. Like again, when you look at it from the surface, Japan does seem like a country where they've got their shit together and the people are satisfied and the people are happy. So how did they get these numbers? Why are Japanese people not as happy as other people in other countries? This I think it's straight up just shitty work-life culture. Just having to work, work, work with overtime pay and no overtime pay. Just like lack of any genuine relationships because people are just single and lonely and deciding to not, you know, you know, uh, what's the word? Get into relationships, have families. Why? Because things are too fucking expensive. Also, I remember Japan, um, I watched a couple random videos on like business and economy and stuff like that. I'm not very too, you know, smart in that kind of topic, but I did hear that Japan had a huge bubble pop back in, was it the 1980s or something? I forget exactly when. And that stagnated their GDP where pretty much for like a decade plus, they have not had any sort of growth. 
even though they are still like top four economies of the world, which is just the government printing out bills to make sure everything looks good on the surface, but there's no actual organic growth is my understanding. The article even starts off saying that, well, if you again, look at it from the surface, there's a lot of great things happening in Japan. For example, in the world, they are the fourth biggest economy in the world, which I I like how he highlights that section and then translates to me like it's I'm watching anime and subtitles. But yeah, fourth biggest economy in the world. But if you talk to anyone that's in finance or, you know, is very interested in topic there, it just seems like it's the fourth biggest. But isn't it ready to just get fucked right now? Because like the inflation in Japan is fucking nuts, right? The Japanese currency is so fucking bad that it's the best time for tourists to just kind of go there and spend your money and Try to stimulate the economy and help them out and, you know, you have a fun time too. That's why they're so focused on tourism, right? Actually surprised me a lot. I thought Japanese economy was kind of going to the shitter, but... That's what I'm saying. It is. But on the paper, it doesn't look like it because they just keep fucking printing bills, which is not a good solution. You're going to catch up to it one day. Apparently, they are the fourth biggest in the world. And on top of that, you know, uh, people in Japan have a high, you know, health rate. Like we have one of the highest life expectancies nice. in the world. It is a relatively safe country as well with the crime rate being very, very, very low. low. Uh, again, as I mentioned, the town is clean. You barely see any rubbish, let alone any bins outside. Uh, and it's a- That's a very interesting thing, how you don't have trash cans publicly, but there's also no trash at all. Interesting, right? Country where, you know, uh, the seasons are in order. You know, the summer is hot, the winter is cold, and the- atmosphere and the nature changes with the seasons and creates some very beautiful sceneries on top of that the culture the subcultures that japan is uh uniquely has you know things like anime manga and games <laughs> yep, that's is also us. very very prevalent and there's a lot of benefits to moving to japan you know like i love living in this country a lot of my friends who moved here love living in this country this country is great but apparently just random side story random random point if you have a lot of money not even a lot of money, but if you have a job that you're not tied down to and you can work from home and you can just go wherever you want, Japan apparently has like an interesting situation where in the suburbs or in the countryside area, there's a lot of abandoned houses. So I see like random content creators like buying houses in the countryside for really fucking cheap and renovating it and making that their own content. That was pretty interesting. There's also what's called suicide apartments, right? So basically, there's obviously, you know, high suicide rate. People are lonely, desperate, depressed and they kill themselves in an apartment. And these are called suicide apartments where these are now, you know, units that are being sold at a much, much cheaper rate because someone died in the apartment. I'm not sure if that's a myth, but I did hear that too. But on top of that, we have a lot of unavoidable problems in Japan as well, especially after the bubble. Lollicons! Or oh, never mind, he's going to talk about the bubble bursting. Burst. Uh, the, yep. the big economic bubble burst in That's the That's what 80s. I'm talking about you before. Know, we've had uh, a very large stint of the economy not growing. Yes, this, this is exactly what I'm talking about. How the economy has not grown. It's just stagnated. It's just maintained. And that's not really good. You, in a capitalist society, number needs to go up. But like, this is bad, but they're top four economy because they print a shitload of fucking bills, which is now going to catch up to them. It's going to be fucking disastrous. At all, even though we are still apparently the fourth biggest economy. On paper, power on paper. You know, we have problems of an aging population, a declining birth crisis, uh, you know, the inc inverted pyramid. Or think of it like this, right? Inverted pyramid where the top population is old fucks that's now retiring and the people that needs to fucking work and keep those old fucks from retiring in peace are the young people. But if you have an inverted pyramid, that is the worst fucking possible thing. Your society will actually collapse. So one of the most common things and, and the most fucked up thing is like the reason why it's an inverted pyramid is because in any late stage capitalism society where the first world nation, you know, your country is doing well, profit gap between the rich and the poor gets so separated that the only people having kids are trailer trash fucking idiots that have no idea about financial literacy and pop babies out or extremely rich people. While the vast majority of people all in the middle, right, they can't even think about bringing another life to the world because they're too fucking it's life is just too expensive. So they refuse to have kids. It's not, it's not even refusing. You're, you're forced to not have kids, right? But then the government then, what they should do is offer support so that you can organically grow your population. But no, you know what they do? They mass Im immigrate, you know, from like specific countries to really 
exploit those people and those people from specifically in, in Canada, for example, in Canada, the government is only immigrating from India. And this isn't me saying India bad. They're getting fucked right now because once they get brought in, they're working shitty ass jobs at McDonald's, Tim Hortons, these minimum wage jobs. And there's nothing shameful about working minimum wage jobs. But when your goal is to bring in a totally, you know, a, a separate population and put them into only these jobs while, you know, uh, facading as like, uh, what's it called? Fucking temporary workers or like, you know, uh, uh, international students and scamming the system. The government then can pay these corporations 70% up to their minimum wage. That's why it's so incentivized for them to immigrate rather than bring in just like, like build up the local population and grow that way. It's a extremely fucked up scenario where people are only chasing numbers. Immigrants are getting exploited. They have no social mobility. They work the shitty jobs at a lower pay than the local population will. The local population gets forced out. They can't do anything. And this is pretty much what's happening, not in just Canada, but I'm sure a lot of different countries where capitalism has kind of reached the late stage. Increased natural disasters that are happening. You know, we just within this year, I can't even count the amount of earthquakes that I have uh, experienced. And, you know, there is a very, very big and real problem of gender equality happening in Japan. Uh, really? Really? I guess, like, inequality between man and woman and, like, misogynistic society? I, I don't know much about that. I mean, it's the government and the people Money? still Wolf trying cap? to what? figure out how exactly to solve it. So when you take all of that into consideration, when you take all the pros and all the cons into consideration, what do we end up with? Well, we end up with this graph right there. Ah, I see numbers going down, but I need my subtitles. Here, this is a graph done by a study which shows the amount of people that uh, answered in the survey as to how happy are you in gotcha. life right now? How they took this survey was they asked 2,000 people between the ages of 16 to 74, making sure that each and every person, or at least as many people as possible, were living in different regions, okay. different lifestyles, different jobs, different family situations, to try and get a broad perspective on the Japanese people. I'm not sure if 2,000 is big enough of a sample size, but it sounds like the different target groups are so varied that it could simulate a good sample size. I don't know. People. And out of 30 people, uh, 30 countries, excuse me, that they asked, Japan ranks one of the lowest in terms of the rate of people who answered that they are happy they're happy Damn. with their lives or they feel somewhat happy with their lives as you can see at the top here 2024 out of the 30 countries that were asked the average amount of people who answered yes i am happy is 71 percent which okay. is good seven percent of people seven out of ten people saying that they are somewhat happy or very happy with their lives is always great to hear uh the number ones uh actually the top parts here are uh, european ones which answered 85 percent yo I mean, what what is up with european countries like netherlands like i don't know much about them but i have seen statistics random statistics of european countries like netherlands where they're all just happy as fuck the middle class is very strong. They have strong security, you know, social security. People can afford to have families and, you know, live fulfilling lives. But it's like, what? We need to copy them. What are they doing right? <laughs> I mean, I can, I can see why, you know, the Netherlands is a great freaking country. Never been uh, there. Mexico ranked pretty highly as well. Indonesia. Mexico ranked that high. Really? I don't know. I thought that. Because, like, so many people from Mexico are trying to immigrate over to the United States for, like, a better life. I thought that things weren't that good there, but they're, like, second place. Asia, uh, India, Brazil, okay. Thailand. These are all in the top right here. Interesting. But all the way here at the bottom, above Hungary and South Korea, ranks <laughs> Japan. at <laughs> South Korea, that's right. We are number one in suicide rape. Don't you dare forget that. You know what we're good at? South Korea is cracked at esports. StarCraft, League of Legends. Mm, we are fucking esport gods. What else are we good at? Uh, plastic surgery. Number one place for medical tourism. All the girls and guys want to come to Korea for the Gangnam style South, you know, South Korean plastic surgeon. What else are we good at? Um, K-pop, Korean drama, stuff like that, right? But beyond that, suicide rate is so fucking high because it's a hyper competitive society where status 
is the most important thing. You chase the brand, you chase the prestige, you chase the numbers, and nothing else matters. And if you score a low mark in a high school college test or something, and you can't get into the target school so that you can't have a chance at getting into the big chebor companies like Samsung, you know what people do? They fucking kill themselves. High school kids, college kids, they'll jump out the fucking balcony because they think that their life is over because they can no longer go to that first tier school and stuff like that. It's an extremely, extremely fucked up culture. And I'm just, I'm very grateful that my parents kind of, they already knew that, you know, South Korea culture was fucked. It was already fucked back when they immigrated here, right? And they're basically wanted to give me and my brother a better chance, more opportunities in life by coming to North America, learning English and giving much more, you know, it just opened up so much more doors. And you know what I did, mom and dad? I studied hard. I got into college. And as soon as I got a big boy tech job, I quit that shit. And now I'm watching anime on YouTube. I hope you're proud. 57%. And this has been a pretty steady decline ever since 2011. As you can see in 2011, 70% of people in Japan felt happy. Obviously, it dipped at the start of the pandemic, all the way down to 52, gradually increasing a little okay. bit as the pandemic reached its end. But now we're seeing another dip again. And it's not just a general happiness index that has dipped in Japan as what well. Uh, the OECD uh, did, uh, according to the Better Life Index, which is basically uh, a, a way to show people like, you know, uh, in, in terms of the work-life balance, like, are you oh. happy with the work-life balance? Fuck no. Who the fuck? Wants to work eight hours, let alone sometimes up to fucking 16 without fucking better pay and then getting forced to fucking drink and then fucking, you know, barely getting home with three hours of fucking sleep. You don't even get home. You just sleep on the fucking bench and you go back to fucking work. You get told to do these menial fucking tasks. These are some things like human beings, I truly believe, are not meant to just fucking plug away doing menial fucking tasks. You know, wasting a third of their day every fucking day so that they can retire and then live their lives when they're like 60 or 70. It's a fucking bullshit. They just need the fucking, you know, people in the fucking working place so that the capitalism money can just keep going up. It's just, I, I, it's an idealistic thing to say, to say like, you know, AI should come in and replace all these menial task jobs so people can truly do what they want to do while being supplemented by universal basic income and not have to worry about money so they can pursue whatever they actually want to do and actually feel fulfillment out of their lives. But unfortunately, it's probably going to be the other case where AI will take care of your jobs and you won't even get universal basic income and things are just gonna get worse it's actually gonna get worse balance out of 35 countries that the oecd asked for the better life index japan ranked as 27th and in terms of the well-being uh you know uh global work life uh work life balance index uh probably the out lowest of the 18 countries that were asked japan ranked dead last so i'm not surprised at that everyone knows the stereotypes of Japanese work culture, right? Everybody knows, even the term black company. I'm not sure where that originated from, but I think that's very common in Japan culture. Niji Sanji, for example, for VTubers. So, uh, as you can see, it's not just general happiness. It's also about the work-life balance, which might not be surprising to hear because if there's one, I guess, big demerit thing in Japanese culture that a lot of people probably know about uh, is that Japan's l work uh, environment, working culture is pretty goddamn brutal, especially- I mean, why is that the case, right? All I have are speculations and opinions, but I think at the end of the day, the root cause of why the work culture is so fucking brutal is because Asian cultures, right? I'm not sure exactly how Japanese people do it, but taking the example from like a South Korean perspective, it's the same, right? The work-life balance there is also shit because people are supposed to just fucking stay in their lane. Don't ask about, you know, injustices or whatnot. Put your head down, do your fucking work and get the fuck out. And don't you dare fucking talk back. And when that kind of mindset is ingrained so deeply into the core of your culture, you can't really vouch for better working conditions. You're not going to fucking unionize. You're not going to want to think for yourself and do better. You might even get into a crab bucket scenario where, you know, you lick the fucking corporate overlords assholes. And as soon as someone else is doing ba better, you want to drag them down because you want to fucking all suffer together. I think that at the core root is this culture, which is so perverse in staying in your lane never speaking out and listening to your elders and there's nothing wrong with respecting your elders but you can clearly see when applied into scenarios like this it can get extremely predatory
especially compared to other Western cultures out there. I can say that, you know, uh, wholeheartedly as someone who firsthand experienced that when I interned at a Japanese company, shit wasn't fun. It's what made me to drive myself to do what I do today. And luckily, I don't have to deal with Japanese companies as much anymore. I'm, I'm my own boss in that nice. sense. So I got lucky with that. And I'm very, you know, happy that I managed to get into that point. But it turns out it's not just the adults that are unhappy in Japan. It's Teenagers? also the children. There was the same study that was done here in this graph. The asking, kids are uh, upset? Children around the age of 15, which I think is a good age because, you know, you're kind of right in the middle puberty. of puberty. you just old enough to not be considered like a, a small child, but, you know, you're kind of in your teenage years. Main character of every fucking anime in a high school setting, yeah. Which is always a, you know, very emotional time for anybody. Very volatile. And according to the same study, Japan ranked second to last above <sighs> Turkey at 53%. I don't know what's going on in Turkey, but damn. Second to last, huh? Children are upset. Why are the children upset? Because they feel that life is hopeless? I mean... Even like when I was a kid, and I'm sure everyone felt the same way when hormones are coursing through you and you're like 15 and you're in high school and you're just starting to realize these social cliques and who's popular, who's not, who's super athletic, who's going to go far in life, who's hot, who's not, you know, are you going to get invited to this party? You know, is that girl that you have a crush on getting asked, by, asked out by someone else? What's my future going to look like? How hard do I have to study? These kids are now drinking and smoking and doing different drugs. Should I you know, participate in that? What am I supposed to do? Who are my real friends? These are definitely tri like turbulent times. I could definitely see it, but that's always been the case. So, but why now is it so bad in Japan specifically? Right? Why now? The top ones again are the Netherlands. TikTok. Social media. Because like, social media? And this might be a boomer take. I feel like social media is the fastest way to get brain rot. It's the fastest way to feel insecure and jealous of other people's success. When you don't have social media back in the day, you don't really know who you're comparing to unless you're in person, right? But when you have Twitter, Instagram, you know, fucking YouTube, Twitch, whatever, right? You see all these different people succeeding in other facets of life, and they look like they're living their perfect fucking lives. And while you look at yourself, you're rotting in bed, you know. And, it, and, and this is specific to even like girls, where girls get such twisted perception what the beauty standards are because these Instagram models are going out of the way, getting crazy surgeries and Photoshop and filtering. And the beauty standards are so fucked, the average girl watching this and scrolling through Instagram is probably thinking, holy shit, I can't ever look like that. I need to do something. Definitely social media and technology has escalated, you know, these mental illnesses that's probably going to develop in children because it's so easier to compare yourself, even though all the things I said about the hormones coursing through your life and, you know, different societal expectations when you're 15, I could definitely see that. Netherlands at 90%, man, kids in the Netherlands are fucking happy. Mexico, Romania. What are they doing in the Netherlands? What the fuck are they so happy? They got a gun to each fucking survey person saying, you're happy, you better fucking answer you're happy, or is it actually a utopia? Romania, Finland, Croatia, a lot of Eastern European countries are considered, the children there are considered very happy, they're very, they're very content and very happy with their lives. Japan, however, is below the UK at 62%. That's saying a lot considering British people love to complain all the goddamn time. Japan is below that. Another index that was done by the okay. same, uh, or rather a different, uh, you know, research was they asked a bunch of 15 year old kids from all over the world, how easy is it to make friends? And well, define friends in person it might be harder than ever. But if you define a friend as just someone online random you made in a Discord server or through a game, I'd say it's easier than ever to make those friends. But these online friends, yes, you can have genuine relationship with them. But for the most part, it's very surface level relationships. You're part of a group chat, Discord server, and you're just kind of, you know, talking on a day-to-day -day basis without even knowing what each other looks like and stuff like that. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but I think in terms of friends being not just like, you know, in person, but like finding online people, like I'd say it's easier than ever. This is the results right here. Romania being the highest at 83% of children said, yeah, I find it pretty easy to make friends. Same with Norway, Croatia, uh, the Netherlands again. Europe just seems to have man. their shit together. However, all we need to look at Europe and copy what the fuck they're doing because it's working over there. All the way at the bottom here, above Chile, is Japan once again. So... 
with every single dead one last. of these statistics, we're almost dead last. Japan seems to be ranking pretty goddamn low on every single one. The adults are unhappy. Kids the are unhappy. Are unhappy. Everyone in general in Japan seems to be pretty miserable. And Why? it's not just a matter of outside circumstances as well, like work or friends. Uh, it also is internal as well. There was another study here uh, that asked people between the ages of 13 to 29, how confident are you in yourself? How much, how much self-esteem do you have? And these are the results right here. The left one being, I am confident in myself. Okay. And the right here being, I'm not confident in myself. And the spectrum being here. But look at this. We look I'm at looking. things like America, for instance. And 57.9% say that I have confidence in myself. I'd say that comes from being such a land of independence and individuality and... Not saying fuck everyone else like I got mine, but I feel like that kind of independence does create a culture where kids may be more confident than other cultures like in Asia where it's totally different. Pretty high. Same with the UK with 42%, with uh, France 42.3%, okay. and then we have Japan 10.4%. And How is it so significantly lower than everything else? It's not even like, like the thing about these numbers so far, like... I don't know how accurate they are, but you can tell, like, the difference between Japan and everyone else. It's such a huge fucking margin every time. And when we look at the opposite side, it becomes very worrying. Sorry, technical issues. Shitty-ass fucking AirPods. Shitty-ass fucking AirPods. Blame Tim Cook for not making AirPods as compatible as Windows, which makes me have to fucking do this every time. Are we back? With 24.2%, one in four people say that they have absolutely zero confidence in themselves. Compare that to something like America, where only 4.2% answered that. Why would kids not have confidence? Confidence is built by repetitive small goals and overcoming them. You set aside a goal for yourself, and every day you work towards that goal, no matter how small it is. And by doing so, you can basically build up this momentum and feeling good about yourself and saying, I did this, I overcame this, I can do that too. I truly believe this is where confidence comes from. But if kids aren't able to pursue that, why are they not able to pursue that? Uh, even uh, Germany, 3.8%. France, 2.2%. The highest here uh, after Japan being uh, South Korea with 8.3%. It does seem like it's not just a matter of an outside circumstantial. I guess it's kind of like strict Asian parents, right? Obviously, tiger parents, helicopter parents, you know what these terms are? These are parents that want you to succeed so fucking hard that they will devoid their child of any sort of normal, healthy childhood. Will make them fucking compete like they're Olympic athletes, making just like beating their ass to study, to be the top performer and everything. And I guess when you do that, well, I don't know. It really depends. Some kids respond better to that kind of stimuli and are able to overcome it and pursue greatness. And some kids will just simply break. And I guess for the kids that break, which is going to be the majority, being told that you're not good enough over and over by the parents who are so upset and disappointed in you would lose any sort of confidence, huh? Happiness, but also an internal circumstantial happiness. It's causing people or maybe that a level of self-esteem is also reflective on the outside world. Either way, there seems to be this intrinsic problem in Japan of Japanese people being miserable, both from an outside perspective and an internal perspective too. And the article here mentions that this is very fascinating. Again, especially when you consider things like, you know, Japan having a pretty decent to strong economy, especially compared to a lot of other countries out okay. there, being a relatively healthy and safe country to live in. Yet, with all of these merits, Japan and Japanese people are pretty miserable right now. Why? They don't feel like they're the happiest that they could be. So why is that? I think it's just shit's too expensive. Work culture sucks. I can't do anything with my fucking life. I feel hopeless. I feel no sense of future. And social media constantly fucking um, shows me that everyone else is living their dreams while I'm fucking stuck doing the same shit without seeing any sort of future. Maybe as simple as that. And this is a question I ask myself as well, because it really is a contrasting perspective, especially when you look at it from the surface. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you know, Japan just seems like a very utopian country. It seems like there are no problems whatsoever. And yet the numbers here are telling a very, very 
different story. And there is very few conclusions or reasons as to why these numbers ended we're up just speculating being what now. they were. But according to one particular uh, professor at Kyoto University, she reckons that the reason might be is because Japanese people, a lot of Japanese people are very heavily affected by comparing themselves to other people. It says, I don't think this is unique to Japanese people. This is just human behavior. Back in the fucking caveman days, you know, big grug, you know, big grug got big rock. And big grug can go outside and hunt boars and go, hmm. And all the girls will go, woo. But then you got the other small dude there in the corner. He can't fucking hunt a boar. He feels like he's nothing compared to big grug. This is something so primitive instilled into our DNA of human competition. But this is probably, even though it's like such a... It's not a Japanese specific thing, but maybe in Japan, it is more exaggerated because of the culture. You see that, you know, based on the fact that Japan is very much a collectivist society, it's Hive mind. That, you know, we don't want to be sticking out in any single way. We want to be like everybody else. If other What I say, what I fucking say, Asian culture, man, it's fucked. So people are doing it like this, then I need to be doing it like that as well. Otherwise, I might be socially ostracized. I might be looked weirdly. I might get the bad end of the stick because I- And when you're in such a repressed culture, it blows up in really, really dark ways. I'll give you two separate examples, both kind of funny. Um, I had a friend. His name was Danny G. We'll call him Danny G in high school. And Danny G, he was not the most popular kid in high school. He was a good guy, but he never went to the parties. He's never drunk alcohol in high school. And I'm not condoning that you should drink alcohol in high school. You shouldn't, right? You're not of age. But the culture back in my day in grade eight was we go to a fucking hockey game, but we wouldn't go to the hockey game. We go to the park outside the hockey game. And then we would get the older kids to buy alcohol and we get shit faced fucking drunk when we were like 14, 15, 16 years old doing fucked up shit like that, right? So that was the kind of culture in the island where I come from. Danny G's never had that shit. So even though I was introduced to these kind of things at an early age and exposed, and maybe it wasn't the best thing, I knew kind of how to control myself and handle myself, Danny G never was. And then when he went to his first prom after party, in a grade 12, we're fucking, you know, graduating, he drank the first alcohol, drank a beer. And then everything that has been repressed inside of him exploded. And he drank an entire bucket, entire fucking bottle of Heinz ketchup because he didn't know how to control himself. What is the example I'm making here? A person that is so repressed that when they finally get given some sort of freedom or individuality or some way to kind of, you know, express themselves, they fucking blow up. Another example. Have you wondered why Japanese porn is so, for lack of better words, cultured? A lot of, a lot of weird, interesting thing going on in Japanese porn compared to other countries' pornography like America. Why do you think that is? Because in Japan, my personal theory is because you're supposed to live in such a well-mannered, you know, modest, humble life that these desires, they slowly fucking bottle up. They build up and they build up and there is no fucking outlet. So then their desires explode into fucking octopus tentacle shit. It's a random ass theory, but you kind of get the idea what I'm saying, right? When you live in a repressed culture with no good way to express yourself, Sometimes it explodes in very, you know, not healthy ways. I'm not fitting in with the crowd. That collectivist mentality might be a reason why Japanese people are not able to pursue happiness in their own way. Because I think it goes without saying that different people seek and pursue happiness in different ways. You know, True. one might be something that is really shitty to one person, might be an absolute godsend to True. another person. And, you know, different personalities and stuff like that seek different things in their lives that's just how humans are regardless of if you're the same race same gender same age it doesn't really matter people are different people want to pursue life and happiness that's right in so many different ways and what happens when you're told that you can't do that you need to be like everyone else you are npc number seventy thousand three hundred sixty two, and you better behave like everyone else here because this is our culture and this is the optimal way to live i would feel so suffocated I would feel that this is not fair. I'm not getting a chance to be who I am. You're imposing these identities off and onto me. This is not who I am. And no matter how you know, well adjusted you are, they're gonna fucking break. And this is probably why a lot of Japanese people feel that way.
Japanese. And it's the fact that, again, Japanese people, you know, say, for example, they go onto social media and see that someone who is not them is being more successful than they are. They are gaining more go. attention. They're seeking. The comparison, right? Looking at social media where it seems like people are living their dream fucking lives. Fun fact, most people aren't. The fucking Instagram pictures, the random post, people that constantly says how happy they are in life, most oftentimes, they're not. They're just making these posts to make it seem like they live in such a utopian world. But at the end of the day, they're just as fucking depressed and lonely as you are inside. It's just that some people have this desire to show on to others that, look at me, I'm living my fucking dreams. Woo! But then this then makes other people see that and they compare themselves to themselves and they're like, why can't I have that life? And most people are not well adjusted to take that L and be motivated rather than being jealous. They should be inspired and motivated to think, you know what? If that guy can do it, I can fucking do it too. But unfortunately, that's not how the average person's mindset works and they will become hateful. They'll become jealous and they'll, const and they'll constantly compare others with themselves. When at the end of the day, the only person you need to compare yourself is you from yesterday if you're making step-by-step -step progress towards whatever goal you have all you gotta be better is yourself from yesterday and if you can do that day by day you'll see progress in a year or two more happiness and that comparing of yourself to another person yet not being able to fulfill that because of circumstantial differences or the fact that society itself is not able to provide that happiness to that particular individual is what's driving people to not feel as happy as they are. And I think that's a pretty interesting hypothesis because concerning things like social media and comparing yourself to people on social media that are more successful than you. I think this is a great hypothesis because again, like comparing with other people is not fucking new. This has happened 20, 30, 40, hundreds of thousands of years ago. It's just human DNA. But why is it worse now than before? Because the advent of social media and how accessible this is compared to back in the past. It's not a Japan unique problem. In fact, I feel any country that has a strong social media presence, aka basically the rest of the Western world, also runs into that same problem. I mean, I don't know what race you are who's watching this video. I don't know what gender you are. I don't know how old you are, but you're probably on social media and you've probably seen YouTube counts as social media. Yeah, we're on social media right now. In people on social media who are more successful than you are. You! You got 810k subs here, 342,000 views posted nine days ago. This ain't even your fucking main channel. <laughs> you know, it's. I mean, I'm not saying I'm jealous, but like, you know, you kind of are that person right now. Also run into that same problem. I okay, mean, we're, sorry, I, I clicked off the video. It, it changed the time. Hold on, let's see where we are. I don't know what race you are. Who's yeah, yeah, yeah. This video. I don't know what gender you are. I don't know how old you are, but you're probably on social media and you've probably seen people on social media who are more successful than you are, regardless of how you define success yourself. And Money! Everybody, I'm sure. Bigger number, better person. It's not true, but quite often, money number of followers number of subs number of views these things are quantifiable and it's just so easy to compare yourself with others with those numbers right admittedly everybody i'm sure has seen a yep. more successful person yep. on social media yep. and thought to themselves man why can't i have that and they yep i did my anime reaction channel for an entire year no fucking growth slowly grinding being jealous, but keeping my head down and grinding. Then I had to delete my channel because of copyright issues. Second channel started, still no growth. And I asked myself, what the fuck am I doing wrong compared to these other channels that are succeeding, even though I think my content is better than them? Now, whether or not that's true or not, it doesn't matter because that's the kind of confidence that I had in myself. And instead of being hateful and being envious, I took myself to, I, I really humbled myself and I told myself, doesn't matter how good you think your content is, clearly there is something wrong you're doing. So I looked at other successful channels and I try to study so hard on what they're doing and I realized, I see, 
I need to change up my content strategy. And I did that. I applied those you know, studies onto my own. And now I'm having more success than the channels that I studied. And this is the mentality that you should go into whenever you feel like you're insecure. You need to be a sponge. Throw the insecurities away. You need to be a sponge ready to absorb all the fucking lessons, all the different knowledge that you don't have. Stop fucking comparing yourself to other people. Compare yourself to the version of you yesterday. Throw the insecurity away. Become a sponge. Constantly learn. And the moment that you stop learning, the moment that you think that you know everything and you just look at other people as like, you know, I'm better than them. I know what I'm doing. That's when innovation stops. That's when you become so full of yourself that you can no longer grow. Just be a sponge. Shut the fuck up. Learn and then grow. They stop to compare themselves to it and they see that and they feel shitty about themselves. I mean, look, admittedly, I'm going to be real with you guys. I felt that many times in my life. I think that's just the way that social media is. That's just human nature. We're an attention spe seeking species, right? Mm -hmm. Like we need that yep. validation from the outside. So th as much as you say that I'm a Sigma, you know, I'm a fucking Sigma. I don't need anyone's validations. All the validation I need is from myself and whether or not that is true. You know, good for you. But human being, they long to, you know, be desired. They long to be connected with other people. We are social creatures, right? Whenever you put something out there, you hope that it's going to get received in a positive life. But the most important thing is understand that, you know, being jealous and being envious of other people's success, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with feeling that. That's normal. But then be aware, hold yourself at that moment and think to yourself, if they can do that, maybe I can too. What am I missing? Let's go fucking learn it and let's move forward because that's the way you're going to get ahead or else you're just going to be hateful online. Time's going to pass. Those people are going to be so much doing better than you and you're going to be in the same fucking position as you were years ago because all you did was hate and be jealous. This hypothesis of social media affecting Japanese people's happiness, I don't necessarily think is a big reason as to why ja Japan's happiness index is as low as it is. Because if that was the case, if that was a big part of the reason, then we wouldn't be seeing such a massive disparity between self-esteem or, you know, how easy it is to make friends with people. Or I think it is social media plus the culture of being subservient and being part of the hive mind in Japan that is making it. That's why the charts are different despite social media and being jealous is, you know, a common thing across different nations and people in general. Or just the general happiness index of children and adults, like these would be not that different. It's the so culture. So from here on out, this is just my hypothesis. Obviously, I'm not a fucking professor. I'm not, a, I'm not an anthropologist. I'm not anything like that. I have no credentials whatsoever. This is purely just my opinion on how I see it. I think the biggest reason why Japanese people are not as happy as other people are is because there are so many social issues that are happening in Japan right now. Because of the culture. That are underlying and not talked about. And as a result of globalization, as a result of Japan opening up to the rest of the world and learning about other societies, learning about other cultures in the West, that comparison, I think, is finally sinking into Japanese people that- It's like the third eye being opened as they realize, oh, beyond the border, different nations in the Western world, they have so much more independence, freedom, and luxuries. Why can't I have that in my own country? Is that the comparison? Maybe they don't have it as good as the rest of the world does. I would say that within the past, you know, 20 something years, basically since the 21st century, Japan and a lot of younger people in Japan are becoming a lot more open to the Western world. They're seeing so much more of the Western world and Western culture, whether that be through direct uh, contact with, you know, someone who lives overseas, or maybe they're put in a position where they're able to visit uh, overseas and, you know, see other cultures. And again, just the sheer access to the internet basically just opens the door wide to anybody who has an internet connection to see what the field looks like. And I think to a lot of Japanese people, the grass does look greener on the other side. And it works the other way too. I'm sure a lot of people, I got a lot of friends in Canada that always want to go to Japan. Japan is just so great. People like think that Japan is just this utopia, but it's so funny because the Japanese people themselves are looking out and they're saying, damn, you guys look like utopia, huh?
grass is always going to be greener on the other side. They see that, oh, they don't have to be in a particular work environment that is similar to theirs. They don't have to be a, a collectivist society. They don't have to conform with how everybody else is. You know, like, I'm sure a Japanese person will look at a culture like America or Australia or anywhere in Europe a lot more of a, I guess, uh, non-collectivist society and think like, oh, well, they're able to do what they want and seek happiness on their own. Why can't, Why can't we do I? that in this country? Why do we have to conform with how society views us? Why do we have to conform with how other people view us? Why do we have to be judged by other people? And I think it's that realization of cultural difference that- They're becoming sentient. The Japanese people are becoming aware. Now they're realizing the injustices in their society. That is finally sinking into Japanese people and realizing that Maybe the way that we're doing it now is not the best way to do it. Maybe. I mean, obviously, Who that knows? is a complete personal preference at that point. That is a personal prerogative. If There's pros and cons of different societies and cultures. I think a lot of the times why people glaze Japan so much is how polite everything is, how clean everything is, how, you know, seemingly perfect and order things are. And that's definitely a pro from that collectivist mindset. And in America, you're not going to get that because everyone's fucking rude, belligerent, individual assholes that's just looking out for themselves because that at the core is the American dream. Stepping on other people and getting ahead so that you can be the fucking top dog. Now, there's, again, pros and cons, right? It, it, it's a trade-off of like what you really want. And a lot of people glazing Japan thinking they're utopian society really doesn't understand the cons, the consequences that comes with being seemingly like a utopian society. If you want to, uh, and you have no problem with conforming to other people's standards and society standards, then that's completely fine, of course. But if you want to be more individualistic, and I think a lot of Japanese people are slowly starting to adopt more of an individualistic trait in their lives and Great. the way that they pursue happiness and the way that they want to live life. But society, of course, in Japan, being you know traditionally a very uh, collectivist society, rather, I think is like stopping them is creating this massive wall for a lot of people to not be able to seek that individualistic life again this is just my hypothesis this is just from how i view it as some i think that him living in japan having a background of what is he australian he's japanese and australian i'm not sure but he's interned in a japan japanese company he has actual insight i'm just spewing random theories and hypotheses on just like what human behavior is according to my experiences but i think what he's saying is totally on point someone who did you know grow up with you know with a lot of japanese customs but also grew up with a lot of western customs as well i've seen both sides of the coin and i think in this case a lot of japanese people finally realize that there is another side to that coin and they're seeing it for the first time but again this is a, a really interesting topic i think and of course i don't have nearly enough credentials to be able to like you know fully say that this is the reason why neither do i i'm just the monkeys shouting up my monkey opinions and if you think that i'm onto something Maybe there is something, who knows? Japanese people are miserable in today's society. So again, I'm going to throw the question over to you guys. What do you guys think about it? Please let me know in the comments below. I'd be super- Social media, constantly being compared to other people, but this is across every race of humankind. So what's special about Japan? The culture of being a collectivist hive mind mindset, being able to stay in line, look down and don't cause trouble for others. These two are why Japan is so unique even though everyone else also compares himself with social media. And also what Joey said about how being exposed to the Western world and now being aware of like other people living like this, shit, what's going on with our world? Definitely that. I think these are the reasons why Japanese people are miserable. Super interested to know. And you know, at the end of the day, man, seek happiness in your own way. That's all I can say. If you're going to take anything away from this is that just because the Japanese people are unhappy or maybe some of the unhappiest people, most miserable people in today's world, don't let that from stopping you from visiting Japan and appreciating Japanese culture and sharing Japanese culture. Because I think, you know, as a, a lot of Japanese people do have a lot of respect for their own culture, seeing other cultures adopting that respectfully and sharing that respectfully and sharing their love for it respectively, I think makes a lot of Japanese people happy. Um
Don't go to Japan and fucking be like Joey Somali, bro. Don't be a. F I fucking hate these new fucking streamers, IRL streamers that go to Japan and intentionally try to pull fucking aggro and make people upset. It is the most vile fucking shit. They should be literally fucking not executed, but like, goddamn, they should just immediately fucking get them out, man. Um, and you know, as someone who is half Japanese themselves. I always love it when people are very respectable and love sharing and talking about Japanese culture. So keep doing that, you know, keep spreading the love. That's all that matters at the end of the day. End of the day. But anyways, guys, again, let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to smack my face right here. Smack the face. Go like the video, guys. This is a new type of reactions. Well, it's not really that new. I like to just like do commentary on mostly anime related content. And this isn't really anime related content. But it is pretty interesting, and I thought I'd just kind of put my, I don't know, reaction out there. Basically, TLDR, Japanese people unhappy. Why? Advent of social media. But social media is common throughout the rest of the world. Let's go then look at what's unique about Japan. It's the culture. This culture of being subservient, being told to just stay in your own lane, and you cannot be your own individual person. If only something hybrid could happen, where, you know, you have the pros of Japanese culture and being so orderly and polite and tidy and respectful, while at the same time adopting some Western nations' cultures, where you're allowed to pursue, you know, individualistic freedom and fulfillment in that way. And if we could just have some kind of hybrid, wouldn't that be a nice world? But unfortunately, reality is not that idealistic and... I'm not sure what's going to happen in the future, but hey, all we can do is just keep watching anime and laugh.